So I just finished watching the first episode of Ancient Apocalypse Season 2. And I won't lie, immediately from the jump, I'm just more... In, I don't know what it is about this season that's capturing me more than the last season did. I remember being really excited for Ancient Apocalypse Season 1. I watched the first four episodes like pretty hard, but it never satisfied my archaeological like taste buds. Uh, <laughs> if you know what I mean, then you know what I mean. But this first episode, it, it satisfied that feeling that I wanted out of a, out of a mainstream archaeology a show again i don't know what it was about the first season but but yeah this first episode of the second season of ancient apocalypse really drew me in so let's talk about the episode go through it what it was about and maybe found out why it hooked me more than ancient apocalypse season one let's go before we start if you are new to my channel and you would like to see more then i'd appreciate if you click that subscribe button also the like button it just the like button specifically uh, helps out but yeah ancient apocalypse episode one chapter one okay so we start off with a pretty dramatic like intro um, it was cool. It was cool. It got me hooked. Sometimes it kind of rubs me the wrong way, you know, when he's talking about this lost civilization, but showing sites where we have like almost like very clear history. Now, this isn't all the time and I'm just pointing it out because it happens sometimes and I'm just, you know, pointing out how it, it, it gets to me when that happens because... Yeah, you know, it's just like, well, we kind of know a lot, a lot more about the area than, you, than you're letting on. But anyway, other than that uh, little nitpick, let's just fucking get into it. So we start off when Graham talks about this place called the White Sands in New Mexico. And I recently learnt, learnt about this site, not related to Graham's uh, discussion of it, but um, through Stefan Milo or Stefan Milo's uh, video about it. And also, I can't remember who else mentioned it. Might have been Ancient Art Architects, also made a, a pretty good video. Um, Stefan Milo's uh, video, very good about this uh, site. But Graham provides a different look uh, to the site, which which I appreciated. I guess a more, I wouldn't say dramatized uh, version, because, he, he, you know, he's providing facts. He's providing, he's providing contextual evidence in a way where it seemed like he didn't do more clearly before. From an archaeologist's perspective, it's like, why are you trying to like rewrite this history? Right. But I've come to realize that Graham is just asking questions. He does go, you know, he will go further than that sometimes, but ultimately he's asking questions and he is intrigued on the idea that things could be older. Yes. Wow. Wow. The fucking groundbreaking thing that I just said. But some people, you know, might, you know, not really understand where he's coming from. I never understood. I thought I did. And then I went through this period of, you know, uh, you know, really don't believe that. But now, you know, I'm coming, I'm definitely coming to understand a little bit more. So we go through this section of the White Sands. We learn that there are fossilized footprints of giant slots. We learn that there's fossilized footprints of mammoths, human beings, literally going on for, I think, like over a kilometer um, in this area. Super, super cool. Um, just a super cool site uh he talks to genuine archaeologists in this episode uh, he also talks to indigenous people which is also cool so as you can see we see more footprints literal like human footprints it's beautiful and this site was dated to be around 21 to 23,000 years old uh so pretty old pretty old especially when the previous established dates i think for the area was supposed to be around I think for the latest 10 to 11,000 years, which Graham discusses at the start of this episode, where he talks about the land bridge and how the ice land bridge opened up. This is the, so this is the established um, kind of view on it. Uh, the ice land bridge opened up a little bridge of, of land and then people from the side crossed over into the Americas and kind of populated the Americas around this uh, time, which is like 11,000 uh, years ago and eventually populated the USA and its I guess uh, southern areas now I think it's pretty much overturned by the evidence where we see you know uh, the evidence at white sands with the footsteps human footsteps human prints under for example mammoth prints or you know other animal prints that you know animals that only um, existed during like this time which is like 11,000 years ago so clearly the human prints or before that and just it's it's basically be confirmed that this site goes back to 21 to 23,000 years super cool so here Graham talks to a woman by the name of Kim Pasquale Charlie and she talks about how she feels super connected to the site because 
you know, it's, I mean, it's, you know, possibly her ancient ancestors that those footprints belong to. So, you know, she gets super emotional when she, when she's around it and also talks about how in possibly 50 years, most of the footprints, especially of human footprints, and I guess most of the other footprints will be gone. And Graham mentions that just how nature preserved the footprints for us, nature will also take it away. But just absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Human footprints, human footprints over human footprints, uh, children footprints. And then Graham also talks about how this would have probably been, you know, around the New Mexico, around New Mexico, you know, the southern part of the USA would have been the prime area for a, you know, quote unquote, like lost civilization with with connections to something. And right? it's probably around like, if anything, type of thing, right? whatever. OK, so we end out that part. Now, this isn't the type of video where I'm going to be deep diving into everything he says. I'm just kind of going over, you know, what happened and. How I feel, you know, the changes and, you know, just how I feel about this episode in general um, while going through it and, you know, just discussing with you guys. So let me know, you know, your opinions uh, in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think. He eventually meets up with Keanu Reeves and yeah, Keanu Reeves seems genuinely interested in the past, genuinely um, questions, uh, you know, how far back the timeline goes. And, you know, things do keep getting old. Things do can keep getting older. I, I guess what we lack is like, you know, more material, solid evidence. Um, but I guess Graham's coming in with his own contextual evidence, with his own outside of the box. Like he said on his recent video he uploaded to his channel, if Graham looks at Giza, he's not looking at it from the perspective of, you know, the Sphinx's cafe or the pyramids were tombs for the pharaohs or, you know, Khufu built the pyramid. He's not looking at it from that mainstream established academic uh, perspective. He's not, he's like literally looking at it from like almost a blank perspective um, not completely blank because everybody's biased, but Graham is also a big proponent of archaeoastronomy. So, you know, he's going to align things differently. He might come to different conclusions. And, you know, the past belongs to all of us. You know, we all have the right to to speculate about our past and, and you know, wonder, you know, what could have been and how things uh, came to be. I think you're on a quest, Graham, to teach and to bring understanding, perhaps. Understanding a perspective in a manner that is very approachable to a lot of people. It's very attractive to a lot of people. I feel like, you know, for me, what went wrong with Ancient Apocalypse Season 1 is that it never incorporated the archaeology feeling that I want. It never incorporated the evidence. It never incorporated, like, sites. It didn't show me hands on, like, you know, what things were about. Uh, like, this first episode just immediately makes me feel like it just satisfies my taste buds for, you know, what I'm searching for in you know you know archaeology lost history human documentary series all about mystery it's not about what we do know it's about what we don't know the, the huge areas that have not been explored or investigated the possibilities that haven't been i agree and i disagree with graham here. the reason i agree with him i'm a start off with that is because <laughs> less me and all those that died to the snot. So the reason I would agree is it is about what we don't know, right? Because things that we, it, mysteries are exciting. It, it makes our minds wonder what could be. And then if we get the answer, it's like, oh, okay, it either lived up to what we had in our brain or it doesn't, or it's completely out of anything that we could have thought about. I, I can see why it's like, you know, Graham saying that, and I would agree with him in a sense, because... You know, that's what makes us, you know, discover, it makes us want to like walk on and what makes us want to walk over that hill as humans. Um, it's that feeling of what's on the other side. What don't we know about that? But something that attracts me to the past and attracts me to the topic of, of history and archaeology and, you know, ancient history is the fact that a lot of these things were so long ago and we do know things about it. The fact that we have information about and the fact that we can derive so much information from i mean relatively so little in comparison to like how you know for example the greeks you know they had like established societies we can piece together things and i think it's so fascinating that we can do that and look so far back into the past what we don't know is also super interesting because we don't know it it's always it's we can discover new things about what they did what they ate what they, you know, how they had fun or whatever. But the aspect of what we do know is is so, like, fascinating to me. So that's why I have to agree and disagree 50-50% with Graham here. Because I think the, as the aspect of knowing about the past is beautiful. And also the aspect of, you know, what we don't know about the past is beautiful and wanting to discover more because we don't know. But I think the fact that there are sites and we can fill in the gaps to things that happened 4,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago... Um, 
it's that's a crazy thing that is such a crazy thing to me so this is the second part of the first episode which i didn't expect it they literally just switch locations and i like that i like that we we really jumping around we learned a lot about the first site uh there's definitely more to be learned i'll leave a link to stefan uh, milo's video about it in the description below but i like how we are halfway through the episode jumping to another site to just get more i, I won't even lie we're just getting we're just getting more value here. So, so let's go. So Graham takes a trip to the Amazon. He talks to this guy in the plane, this guy with him in the plane. And the guy's telling him about, but he was flying over in the 80s. So this guy discovered an earthwork, an earthwork which eventually led to almost a thousand being discovered. And on uh, this area of the Amazon called Acre. And yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. Just crazy, uh, just absolute, just beautiful. Right? Beautiful earthwork um, structures. I just earthworks. Um, were there structures? Uh, possibly, possibly on there. But I, I think there's no evidence for structures being on uh, those lines there. So it might have just been earthworks, but there's so many. It's quite fucking big. And there's literally roads coming from, from them. So it's like connected. Super cool. Super cool. And the guy that discovered it, he was like called up a famous archaeologist. He was like, yo, I found this. You know, he sent a picture. He was like, you know, can you explain this? She said, no, that's impossible. So again, you know, just another example of things getting older. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that Graham's lost ancient advanced uh, civilization was real, but it is interesting. Uh, it, it's very, very interesting. And the way Graham presented uh, the site in this episode was very, very compelling. So these two guys, uh, including the guy that found it and another guy spent over 20 years i think um really study uh these earth earthworks and putting them together um kind of just lining them all up as you, as you can see and yeah they discovered like roads the area is full of roads as you can see he says hunter gatherers do not build roads they don't have any need for that it needs a society with much high level of thinking um and then something absolutely crazy Right. They obviously did some exca excavations uh, near a earthwork, uh, I assume, and yeah, discovered quite a bit of pottery. And these, I did not, uh, we found 40,000 shards of ceramic. That's crazy. I didn't expect this to be like, I didn't expect them to find, I don't know why, but I just didn't, I just didn't, I was hoping that, you know, they'd find some, you know, a trace of, you know, the people that, that inhabited the area. But I did not think that they, you know, discover 40,000 shards of, uh, of ceramics of, of like this is big. So these are at least 2,500 years old. Look at that. In the Amazon, this apparently wasn't possible like 20, 30 years ago. Obviously, things have changed. You know, the mainstream timeline has had to have gone. They, you know, they have to push it back. Yes, normally polychrome ceramic is considered to be part of civilization. So look at those. Look at those. Look at this. So in comparison, we got ancient Greek on the left. We got ancient Amazonian on the right. Look at that. Look at the patterns there. Your ancient Greek artwork is just beautiful, especially with those parts. But amazing. Look at that. I assume they put it together. Look at that. Like, it's crazy that we have this. And, and if these are the same people, I mean, even if it's not, right, it must be related um, to the people that built the, the mound, uh, the earthworks. I assume it is the same people. Or at least, you know, very close uh, relatives in the same area. But just look at that. Like, just look at it. Okay, so as you can see, just this episode was jam-packed, you know, with information. And just, just you know, a lot of, like, just, just a lot of sweetness. A lot of archaeology fucking sweetness. Like, like I want to hear some actual, like, I want to see some actual evidence. I want to see some actual, like, shit. I want to see, I want to, like, like, you know, sh build me a concrete place. Of where you're coming from, you know, don't just say that Anunnaki did it. Graham really, really delivered with this first episode, in my opinion, in my opinion. I'm not sure if he delivered for what his argument is, but he at least delivered in, in really, you know, providing 40 minutes of, you know, enjoyment in the space of ancient history. Like, you know, like, like, like I would recommend this to anybody. Like, really, you know, not even if you are a fan of, of you know, Graham Hancock or the ancient uh, history or, you know, the ancient uh, civilization stuff, you know. Uh, when it comes to season one, I don't know if I'd recommend that to, to, to everybody because that's really trying to push its narrative uh, way harder than, than this season is. So, yeah, Graham and a group of other guys with LIDAR go to, as you can see, 
this section of the rainforest, which literally from this section, it's, it's fucking forest. Like it's just a wall and then it's just 5 million kilometer square feet of forest. So they take the LiDAR drone and they fly it uh, over this area. And in the meantime, you know, just to, because what LiDAR does is it shoots lasers basically through the fucking leaves, through the trees, and it reveals differences. Uh, Graham explains it, and you know, this is where I'm getting it from. It reveals the differences in elevation <clears throat> of where, the, I guess, the ground starts or whatever, something like that, right? And while that's going on, Graham talks to this guy, which is a native to the area, and I assume, you know, he has ancestral ties to the area as well. He's playing, see, so he's saying pretty certainly it wasn't made for war, it wasn't made for defense. We don't know if that's 100% true, but I mean, we don't know, right? But I just find it interesting. So, yeah, these earthworks are, are just, you know, just beautiful. They're cool to look at, um, especially from above. So that native guy to the area, he said, he said it could be a possibility that they might have created these in tribute to, like, a leader that passed away or you know someone of importance that passed away um it would be interesting if these were kind of like grave stones almost but i don't know if human bodies have ever been uh found but i guess it's like would be interesting if these were like burials and each one was like a burial maybe maybe it's like a grave site type of thing but they just seem big for that you don't need the space for like one person um unless he was important yeah super interesting great man go Super cool episode. And then he leaves us with a with the cliffhanger of, of, of the decade. I won't even lie. Literally, like they, they get the results back from the LIDAR. So so the guy is looking at it, they're all looking at it. He shows how it looks with the trees. He's about to click uh the trees off button. And as soon as he does, Graham goes, Oh my god. Or some shit. He he does this face. And then the episode ends. And then it goes to credits. So thank you, Graham Hancock. I hope you address uh, what that LiDAR results were in the next episode. You better address it in the next episode. Um, if you want to know if he addresses it in the next episode, leave a like on this video and I might uh, do a little review of the next episode. Who knows? We'll see what happens. I just felt really good about this first episode. Ancient Apocalypse Season 2, Chapter 1. Way more, you know, just digestible. Good episode overall. I would recommend it pretty much anyone interested in history. And even if you aren't inter interested in history, Graham Hancock's editors... Uh, got you because yeah the <laughs> one thing before i leave and uh, before i end this video off uh before i forget so obviously you have you get that you have that documentary feeling right what when you're watching a documentary but because it's 2024 you you can heavily notice that you know things are just cut faster than they used to be so if you watch an older documentary it will just linger more you know on and and that's a good thing sometimes because it puts you into the the space of where you need to be i don't know if it's you know just the editor or I don't know what you know what it was, but yeah, the editing was a little bit faster than than I would have liked for a documentary uh, like this. It was a super super small nitpick, super small nitpick. Good episode, give it a watch. Uh, also, leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you uh, want to see more. I would appreciate it. Also, that notification bell. You know what to do. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate the time. Uh, this is a longer video than I usually do, but fuck it. Ancient Apocalypse season two. Have a good rest of your day. I appreciate the time. See you.